Hey there, what's up guys? Welcome back to the iOS dev channel. In this video, we're gonna be learning about paths and linear gradients and fills in this video, okay? Now, this is gonna be super quick and it's gonna give you a solid understanding of the basics of paths, lines, and moving points. Now, this is really just a awesome place or a awesome starting point to getting into drawing an animation in Swift UI. Now, this is a more advanced tutorial that you see here on the screen one of which that if you've probably gone through, you probably didn't understand what was going on 90% of the time, like myself until I really kind of studied it. Because while Apple does tell you a few things about how to go through this, they don't really explain any of the values in depth to the point that they make any sense. They don't explain any of these values. Um, they just kind of tell you that they're there and you're supposed to put them in there, okay? Now, I actually am making I'm adding this to my course on Swift UI, and that's probably there by the time you're watching this video, but I don't wanna plug my course. I'm just saying that this video will really put you in a good position to learn things like this, and this is in my Swift UI course. So go ahead and check that out on my website if you want. Now, if you wanna get started, go ahead and create a new Xcode project, okay? So what we're gonna do is choose single view app, and we're just going to say paths, and drawing in Swift UI or whatever you want to call it. Now, while that's kind of loading up, I wrote a companion article on this like I've been doing lately. That's in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, basically the exact same thing we're doing here except for in written format. Don't check it out if you don't want to. I prefer that you stay on the video, but that's a resource for you all if you want to check it out. Let's go ahead and close off that side and close that off and I think we're good to go. I'll zoom it in a little bit more, maybe one more. Okay, it's not letting me. The The beta is kind of buggy here, so it looks like that's just gonna be how far we're zoomed in. I think that's plenty big anyway. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we really want to kind of add a path to the screen. And the way we can do this is by getting rid of the text and saying path, and then saying path in, and then now we're ready to use paths, okay? We basically just created this view as a path. Go ahead and command click on path. And if you hit show quick help, it doesn't really give you too much information. It usually does. Uh, I don't know if they'll add anything to this. I don't think they will. Let's go ahead and hit open in developer documentation. And you can get as much more information on this as you can in here. This is going to be exactly what it looks like on developer.apple.com. You'll see it provides you with some topics and basically all these methods and functions and things like that, right? which aren't always explained, but if you're a seasoned developer, it's pretty easy to go through this kind of stuff and learn it. And that's partially how I learned this, okay? So what we're gonna do is pull that to the side and you can look at that if you want, but we're just going to position our path. And the way we can do that is by saying path.move and then saying to CG point, begins a new subpath at the specified point. Now, what I showed you at the beginning of the video, it was kind of off a little bit to the right. So what we wanna do is move it to, and then CG point, and we'll start it on the X axis at 20. So a little bit to the right, and then zero on the Y axis. Now, I'm gonna pull this over a bit so we can see it. And we can't see anything yet because we haven't drawn any lines and you need more than one line anyway. So we have to add two lines before we can see anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy path.move and I'm gonna rename it to add line. And then let's just go ahead and copy that one again and paste it right here and see what we get. And we don't get anything because they're in the exact same place. So I'm gonna go ahead and say 300 on the X axis and we'll wait for that to compile. Don't think we'll see anything. Let's go ahead and change the Y axis on the on this one because we're not really telling it to go anywhere on the y axis so we'll say 300 there and you'll see we're given this triangle now if i change it to 30 you'll see it goes up a bit so what's going on here is it's starting at 20 and it's going down to it's it's at 20 on the x axis and then 30 on the y axis so it's kind of making that line right there and then this line comes in and it's saying okay well we're starting all the way over at 300 and we don't want it to go down at all so it kind of forms this triangle and it stitches itself together that's one feature of path is if you don't provide another line that touches the next point, it's just gonna stitch it back together, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and move this to 10. And as you'll imagine, what might happen is it's basically going to create a little edge there 
and it's gonna be like a square that has a slant. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna say 10, and you'll see that it kind of brings the entire thing down. But if we add another line, it will do just that. So let's go ahead and copy this. And let's say that on the x-axis, it's at 300 and at the y-axis, it's zero. And now you'll see we get that little square because we now have a line from there to all the way to there, sorry, from there to there, and it kind of stitches it together. Whereas when we're doing this, there's no line to stitch it together. It's simply just starting at 310, which makes it right there, okay? But again, having one at Y0 starts it there and stitches it down to this 10 one. So if you were to read it more logically, you'd wanna put this line kind of up here just so you understand how these lines work. It doesn't matter where it goes though. All right, well, it does matter where it goes. I don't know what I was trying to say there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going, because they're, they're stitched together. Basically what's happening is if I put this here, this is going to attach to this line, okay? And that's why it crosses over. All right, so let's put that back and let's change the value to a different value. What I wanna do is say 300 on this one, and then now it goes all the way down to there. And then on this one, we'll say 300, and you'll see it creates a box, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to the last part of this video, and it's basically just adding a fill color. What we can do is say dot fill down here, add this modifier on the path, and we can say style is, or not style, but let's just say color.green, and let's see what that gives us. And then we're gonna add a gradient, but I just wanted to show you that you can add colors. You can also add gradients, all right? Now, what I wanna try, just out of curiosity, I didn't think about this before, I wanna command click onto path in if you're running Catalina, and I'm gonna hit inspect, and you can see we have the fill right here and we can change it. Okay, now I'm really curious as to what will happen once we add the gradient. I wonder if it will give us options there. Let's go ahead and try it out. I'm gonna get rid of the yellow, and I'm gonna say linear gradient and see what that provides us. We'll say linear gradient, and we're gonna choose the only initializer there, and we'll say, okay, we need a gradient, and if we say dot and knit, we can be given those initializers for gradient, which is gonna give us these colors initializer, which we are then going to say color dot green or whatever color you want and color dot yellow. In the medium article, I did like blue and red and that will give us a nice color. Now it's not really showing up because we don't have any starter endpoints. So we'll say dot and knit and I'll just start it um, pretty basic. I'll just say 0.5 and zero and then dot and knit 0.5 and 0.5. Now those are values you can kind of play around with to understand more of what's going on, but I'm not gonna go into depth on these values here. Now it looks like mine didn't update. I'm gonna up, I'm gonna just gonna recompile it real quick because I know that this works, but for some reason it's not showing up right. Maybe it's because I use green and yellow. What I'm gonna do though is put this all on separate lines so it's easier to read. Okay, so Start point will go there and end point will go there. And then I'll drag this a little bit more so that we can see it. And there you go. You can see that the gradient popped up and it looks really nice. All right, so go ahead and feel free to mess around with these values. And again, I wrote the Medium article. You can check that out. And I am recording the section where we build this out in the course and I'm uploading it today, okay? So if you're watching this video, maybe it's not up yet but this is coming to the course if you're enrolled in it. And uh, I'm gonna explain these values because I found that they're not explained here in the docs, in the Swift tutorials. And I think that will be of great help to you. And uh, I know how annoying plugging my courses can be, but uh, I'm really just trying to build this up and help you all out at the same time. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a like, subscribe. Let me know what you thought about the video in the tutorial. Let me know of any issues or complaints you have and uh, I'll help you out, okay? See you guys in the next video.